Hello everyone. I am Dr. Ahmed Subairaj, Assistant Professor in Neurology at MES Medical College, Pendal Manna in Kerala. So today I will take you through the journey in the CAT lab. So this is where we do our digital subtraction angiography to look into the cerebral vessels. So if there is an abnormality in that vessels, we intervene. So this is within the CAT lab. First, we have to change it and change ourselves into uh, lead apron so that we don't get the enough uh, get radiations, ionizing radiations from the cath lab. Then we use all the sterile precautions, clean ourselves, and then change over before getting into the cath lab. Meanwhile, the patient we are planning to do the angiography. Usually, it is done through the femoral artery, and uh, sometimes for ease. And uh, if there is some abnormalities within the arch, that is the arch of iota, or some problem within the femoral area, then we go in for the radial approach for uh, seeing the cerebral vessels. So this is how uh, this is a cath lab we have. Usually biplane cath lab is used, but if biplane is not available, you can use the monoplane cath lab. So after changing with all the sterile precautions we approach the patient first reassure the patient that this is a simple procedure in which a wire will be passing through your arteries and a dye would be injected and make sure you tell the patient that while injecting the dye some burning sensation or smile headache could occur to this patient so that gives them reassurance and after cleaning and draping the area of the wrist, that is where our radial artery is, we inject lignocaine into either sides of the radial artery. After stabilizing that area of the wrist and giving adequate anesthetic agent, we insert the puncture needle into that area. So uh, this is the puncture, micropuncture needle which I am inserting. After localizing the pulse of the radial artery, we inject the needle or insert the needle and look for the backflow of blood. Once that red black flow of blood or the red blood is seen, we remove the stillet. You can see the blood coming in pressure. So you should make sure that you are not going into the vein and you should be rather going into the artery. After you get the enough backflow, you will insert the micro wire into the micro puncture uh, uh, needle. So now you can see we have got the access to the radial artery through the wire. Now what we do is make a small incision so that there is very small incision so that this uh, in the we have we are able to insert the sheath sheath helps to uh, helps us to keep this all uh, uh, this uh, area which we have inserted intact that is the importance of sheath after inserting the sheath what we do is we remove the stillet as well as along the wire which we had initially inserted remove it check for the backflow of blood to make sure that we are still in a patent radial artery so let's see here yes opening yeah you can see the gush of blood coming out now check for the backflow with the syringe just putting the syringe and opening that three, three, three way there there will be enough blood coming into the syringe after that you take some blood that is that is a flushing technique you take some blood, mix it with water, tap it so that no air bubbles go in, then go back. This is in heparin being given to the patient so that the radial artery is flushed with heparin and it, there is no thrombus forming while doing the procedure in, inside the cath lab. After pushing the heparin, we have to push, flush it with again uh, saline into that region. After that, we insert the microwire along with the catheter into the radial artery and you can see in the 
uh, gantry uh, that is uh, in the console that the wire is going in so the first wire follows and about 10 to 12 centimeter behind is the catheter which has to follow so the wire proceeds or pro is in front of the catheter because otherwise if catheter alone goes in front it is highly likely that it will injure the intimal region and the dissection can occur and especially when we are going through the radial approach we have to be careful regarding this so as we know we have entered the radial artery to the brachial artery then reaches the subclavian artery and if you can see now that catheter there in the uh, uh, lobby control is going upwards that is suggests that first so it will be going from the subclavian directly into the vertebral art every time try to reassure the patient so that we have minimal motion during the procedure so you can see so after that inject the dye I have inject injected the dye so this is actually I had gone into the carotids so brachiocephalic trunk from the subclavian I had gone into the brachiocephalic trunk then gone up to reach the common carotid artery where I had injected there if you say see carefully you can see that so now we changes change the approach so initially we had taken the photo or kind of photo of the lateral view now we go in for the andro posterior view inside the brain so now you can see yes uh, so this is also yes you can see yes this is the carotid now every time you insert a wire and take it out from the catheter so we have the catheter inside that we use the wire when we manipulate the catheter inside the artery every time you remove the catheter wire you have to double flush so that we remove all any thrombus or any air within the system after that reinsert the catheter each and every time when we want to manipulate so after manipulating we will be able to see at different uh, arteries at different levels so initially I had catheterized or gone into the right carotid artery, taken an injection and then now going from the right subclavian to the right vertebral artery. So sometimes the uh, vessels may be difficult to find. That is when we do the roadmap as shown now. So this is a roadmap. So this is superimposed image. Now you have the roadmap. Now you ha can direct your wi wire based on the roadmap you have obtained in this film so now i can see where the vertebral artery is going a thin line is going up so this is kind of a non-dominant right vertebral artery which is having that is why the wire was not going easily into the right vertebral artery so with the roadmap it is easy for me so i have to just direct so how to direct is based on the torque we give so we don't have any access or any uh, steering up inside the artery now what we have is what in the distal end in the other end that is not distal end proximal end in our hand so in that we give talk to the vessels talk means just bending the or uh, removing the catheter uh, within the fingers so in that way when we uh, slide in between the fingers it that other end the distal end moves in a up and down fashion and we'll be able to get into the ostium so now i have catheterized or um, uh, or gone into the right vertebral artery now i am taking the injection of the right vertebral artery so injection we use iodohexol dye or omnipec uh, for taking the injection yes so now vertebral artery we have in, in, injected now this is what is called double flushing technique so every time you remove it remove any uh, after injection or maybe even taking especially taking while t putting the wire for some time and manipulating and taking out the wire you have to 
do double flush technique so uh, now what we do is we have completed the procedure the other artery procedures we complete the right vertebral right carotid uh, left vertebral all can be approached even from the right side and now we had removed the artery uh, catheter along with the vessel now clean and drape the uh, side the radial puncture is very useful because it can allow early ambulation femoral we have to keep the patient six hours bed bound and takes time same uh, day we can discharge the patient by evening if you do it radial artery puncture in the morning so hope you liked this is to generate interest in intervention for you thank you